When you think of Star Wars variants, a few come to mind. But today, we're talking about the not so famous and the not so easy to spot variants. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Journey. So what do I mean by easy to spot variants? Well, take the brown snake and the orange snake Yoda. That's one of them. There's the brown hair and the blonde haired Luke. And one of my favorites, the red cloaked Bib Fortuna and the regular tan color Bib Fortuna. But there's a ton of variants out there that aren't that famous and aren't that well known, especially to me. And some that are hard to spot if you don't know what to look out for. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And even though I could fill a five hour show just talking about hard to spot variants, in today's episode, we're gonna go over 12 of those. Not the top 12, but the 12 I think that you need to know first. And trust me, if you have some of the figures that I'm gonna be mentioning, you're gonna be rushing over to your collection to see if you have these variants. Trust me, as I was making this list, I did the same thing. Number one, the most famous is the hollow tusk sand person. And most collectors have the sand person with the regular face tusk that looks like this. But from 1983 to 1985, the hollowed out version of the sand person, or at that time, Tusken Raider, began its distribution run on the return of the Jedi cards. No one's certain why this change was made so late in the figure's history, but collectors have made this one the most important variants to have in their collection. Number two, the short V power droid. Now, I had no idea that this even existed, even after I did research on the power droid. Many of the sites said that there are no major variants out there, but there is. It's the short V. Now, if you aren't looking for it, you won't even see it, and that's what makes this list so different. It's a small detail, but when you see it, you can never unsee it. If you look at most of the power droids, the major differences in the figure will be differences in the sticker application. Some stickers might be long, some stickers short, some stickers different color. The front sticker may even be applied upside down by the factory, but the main variant in this line is called the short V, and that's this area right here. So this is the long V, and this is the short V. It has a shorter mold in this area and is apparently highly sought after by collectors. The short V power droid was released on the first wave of the Star Wars cardbacks and later releases were updated to the long V. Besides that as the main differences, some other ways to spot a short V are no protruding antenna, the silver leg rod is a different shape than the regular power droid, and the red paint on the sticker is a different color. And another big difference is the white band on the side. The white band on the short V is made of paper, while later releases are made of a glossy white plastic. And although I'm not doing price research on this episode, I can tell you that recent prices from sellers on Facebook are averaging $100 for the short V. Number three, the green hair Maydeen. I had no idea this variant existed until I submitted a general Maydeen to get graded by CAS. I submitted a flesh mold painted gray hair Maydeen, but I had no idea there was differences in a Maydeen. And there's a couple. One is a gray mold with painted flesh skin that looks almost peach colored and the other is a green haired variant. I had no idea. Number four, bolt left hand 21B. Now, this is one that I had mentioned in a previous episode, but you have no idea the number of people that watched that episode and told me that they had that variant and never knew it. So it had to be on this list. On 21B's left hand of this variant, you will find an extra bolt. On the regular version of 21B, the bolt will not be there on his left hand. So go and check it out if you have one. Prices aren't high on these though, but they do fetch a tiny bit more than the ones without a bolt. Number five, the different paint jobs for IG-88. Now this one is a bit more common to collectors, but I think it's worth mentioning for this figure in particular, and because I love this figure so much. Now I've seen variants on IG-88 and people talking about different colors for the eyes, like red or orange, but the main two variations that I'm talking about here are the different color applications to the entire droid itself. One is the matte gray paint, and one is the glossy metallic paint. But as you can see, one has a finish that is more matte gray, and the other paint application is a more glossy metallic gray. I happen to have the glossy one, but let me know which one you have in the comments. Number six, Molded Legs Han 
in his Hoth battle gear. This figure variant had gone undiscovered and unnoticed for years until the birth of the internet and photo comparisons and libraries that started to surface. This variant is simply a factory error in where the legs are molded in tan plastic and never given the final paint application. It's hard to tell if you aren't looking for it, but this rare example of one leg painted and one leg molded can show you a good comparison of what you have to be looking for. Number seven, Imperial Commander. Skinny head, fat head, pink face, pale face. Now this may be one of the most overlooked and one of the most hidden variants because it's hard to tell without knowing. And without having a visual comparison, either physically or on hand or reference pictures, you really can't tell. The Imperial Commander variants come in either a fat head or a skinny head variant. And in the research that I've done, although the majority of the pale or pink face variants come in the skinny head, the fat head only comes in the pink face variant. So if you know otherwise, please let us know in the comments. Number eight, the Univisor Snow Trooper. Just like the Stormtrooper, the Imperial Stormtrooper in Hoth Battle Gear has different variations in the sculpt with soft and hard variations. Also, some with and without country of origin stamps. And another feature which is easier to spot, but not on first glance, is either having a Univisor or a dual ocular visor feature. I happen to have the dual visor in my case, and yes, I know the skirt is displayed wrong, and this is the one I had since childhood, so instead of trying to rip the cape off and fixing it, I've decided to leave it on and maybe get a replacement. Although I did have one in a baggie, and in an episode, I did send that off to get graded by CAS, and from what I can see, it's the dual ocular visor as well. Number nine, 88 with the circle and one without the circle. This is the one that is almost impossible to see and one that I didn't even know about until I did some research about another figure and happened to trip on this info. 88's variants will have a number of combinations on his leg joint. Some will have circles on both the leg joints and some with none and also some with one on one side and none on the other side. This is because these legs were made at some factories and distributed in parts to get assembled at other factories. So sometimes the legs didn't match. So do me a favor and go check your 88 right now. I'm gonna go do it too. I happen to have a circle on one of the legs and none on the other. Number 10, the weird Dengar variants. Now, just like the blue and purple smog Ugnaught, there can be an argument made for color fading. Now the obvious variant differences that you're gonna see in the Dengar is the pale and the flesh colored skin. And I happen to have a pale skin Dengar. And just like the Stormtrooper, some Dengars have sharp molded features and some are soft. These sharper versions only come with the pale skin Dengar, so that's one way to tell. But there are also color differences in his armor and backpack colors. And these are the hardest to tell in my opinion. There are three shades of armor. On the flesh colored skin, you're gonna find the lightest of the purple armor. And on the pale variants, you're gonna find the other two darker shades. One slightly darker purple and the other very dark purple. Hard to see if you don't have a photo reference or the actual figures on hand to see. And then there's the even harder to spot red and brown backpack variants. And this is where I have trouble even seeing if this is a variant and goes back to some collectors arguing if the purple smog Ugnaught is a true variant or a color fade. It's the same thing here. Is this a true variant or a color fade? Let me know in the comments if you have come across this variant and what your thoughts are on this variant feature of the Dengar. Number 11, and now we come to one of the most famous but one of the most easily overlooked variants if you aren't looking for it. So one of the most famous and easily overlooked variants in the Kenner line, and probably one of the most popular, the Red Bar R5D4. And I wasn't gonna include this, but it's hard not to. It's more obvious than the rest on this list, but if you don't know about it, it's the difference between knowing and not knowing that may make a wild garage sale find turn very exciting. And the Red Bar R5D4 is just that. The Red Bar R5 has a filled in red bar on its main front sticker, while the other variant has this area in just a red outline. So here's the story with the Red Bar R5. The Red Bar R5 was released first on the 20 B-backs. 
Somewhere in the production process of this first run, the stickers were updated to the outline bar and the red bar was discontinued. But some red bars made their way on Empire Strikes Back cards and Return of the Jedi cards, and those are extremely rare. And this is understandable due to the fact that many sticker prints were made and sent out to other factories, so that makes this entirely possible. Number 12, mold marks on the thigh and shin of the Gamorrean Guard. Besides country of origin stamps being the main variation of these guards, and skin and armor color, there's one variation that often goes overlooked because it's so hard to pick out. On some Hong Kong variants of the Gamorrean Guard, there are mold holes on the top of the thighs and there's also mold holes on the bottom of the shin. If you aren't looking for it, you're not gonna notice it, but run to your figures and see if you have one. The figure I have doesn't have these mold marks because the version that's inside my case is a Lily Letty figure. And like I said, only the Hong Kong versions of the guard have these marks. <laughs> so did you learn anything new from that list? And I know I couldn't fit every figure in here that has a small variant class and hard to spot variants, and there are hundreds of them. So what would you put on this list that I didn't have here? So if I read your comment and it's one that I never knew about, I should make an episode about it. But right now, I have to tell you two stories about two figures that were on that list. And yes, both of those figures we're gonna get today. So one of our good friends from the collecting community wanted to send me a surprise figure. And when people send me figures, those are the most special because one, they come from friends. And also when they come from collectors who know what you're trying to do, it does make those figures a lot more special when you see them in that case because those figures tell amazing stories. And the figure that I'm about to talk about is the one that prompted this episode. This comes from a good friend, Gilster, 37, and he did not tell me what's in here. A lot of tape on this thing. <laughs> and I also don't wanna cut myself. What is inside? Wow, there's a lot of layers to this thing. Whoa, look at this first. We have a nostalgic magnet. So this picture of Luke, and he's getting his medal, this is the outfit that he's wearing underneath. And they put that yellow jacket on him at the last moment because he was getting lost inside the shot. But this is what Luke was supposed to be wearing. I really dig this, Gilster. Oh, look at this. This is cool. And I save all of these and I put it into my scrapbook. So this is gonna go into Gilster's portion of the scrapbook. All right, and next, wow, look at this. There's a bunch of stuff in here. We got a little Slave One. All right, we have a rifle. But check out this guy right here. We got a Maydeen. Wow, and it's the green hair variant. And if I'm looking, yeah, it's the Taiwan version. Gilster man, this is rad. And it comes with his staff. And the figure is in pristine condition. The limbs are uncracked, you can't move them. And I don't wanna move them. You can't move the legs, you can't move the arms. Usually you have paint that's missing right here. Yeah, so Gilster hooked us up with some really cool things. So thank you, Gilster, for sending me that amazing green haired variant Maydeen that I never knew existed. And this question is directly for Gilster. Should I get it graded or should I leave it in that case? And the decision is only up to you. And if you guys wanna comment to coax Gilster into making a decision, let both of us know. And our good friend Drew over at Collector Displays knew I was getting more variants added to my collection, so he sent me a special gift that included more extension planks for my case. So for right now, I'm gonna place my green haired General Maydeen on the extension plank in my Collector Displays case, but I'm not gonna put him on a peg stand and I'm not gonna put the staff inside his hands just in case Gilster says to grade it. So let's cross this Maydeen off our list, and since it's an addition to our collection, we're gonna put it in our Return of the Jedi list for right now, and list that as 89B, but I know that it's actually figure number 107 in my loose run, and it was gifted, so it gets a big G. And one more thing that we got. So we've made some friends in the collecting community, and some of those friends happen to be on YouTube as well. And some of those friends also have toy shops. And this group does both. So one of the guys from Five Idiots Talking Toys and Rogue Five Toys, Brandon, I bought a figure from him and he lives nearby. So instead of mailing it to me, he decided to come by and drop it off. And he dropped off a very, very nice looking snow trooper because my snow trooper has the skirt displayed wrong. So this is sort of me amending that wrong, but when he delivered it, 
I noticed that there was a difference in the one that I had. And again, it was one of the reasons for me doing this episode, the small, tiny variants that you never notice. So now I have a dual visor and a univisor. So I'm gonna use my extension plank and keep both of them on with the one that has a skirt on the correct way in front. So thank you for going on that little small exploration of the variants that are hard to spot. And let me know in the comments which ones that you discovered just because of this episode. And let me know the ones that I should include on a future episode. And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And if you need any supplies for your collecting journey, down in my description are links to items you may need. And when you do click and buy from those links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And we finally have our own merch store, so head on down to the descriptions to get your hands on some Padawan collector gear. And yes, there's even some Rami and Jaws gear. And please join me on all my other social media channels. All the links are in my description or on my homepage of my YouTube channel. And please subscribe if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me. And also hit that notification bell so you can know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.